The holy grail of clinical research is the randomized controlled trial, or RCT. If a new therapy succeeds in an RCT, then it can be used in future people with the relevant condition. But RCTs have a problem, and it could affect me or you in the future. Let me explain. By nature, RCTs measure average effects. So, on average, a person will benefit from a medication that passes an RCT. Let's think about this a little deeper. If an RCT finds a significant positive treatment effect, that means that the data suggests that a null effect of zero is unlikely to have come from the data. This distribution represents the difference in group means, so we can divide it up into a placebo and treatment group. If there was a positive effect, it means that the treatment group had more people who responded better to treatment on average. But more doesn't imply all. It's still very possible for there to have been some people who did not respond to the therapy or even for some of them to have been harmed by the treatment. So even when a therapy is shown to work, there is still a possibility that it will not work for a small part of the population. But RCTs are considered the gold standard for proving that new medications work. If we want to show that therapy works for an individual, how do we get around the problem of the average effect? Statisticians have a way, and that's the topic of today's video. This is Pocket Stat, a series of short explainer videos on useful and interesting concepts and statistics. In this video, we talk about about the N of 1 trial. The N of 1 trial gets its name from the fact that only one person participates in the experiment. They're also known as single case designs or personalized studies. That's a far cry from the hundreds or thousands of people that RCTs need, so how does that even work? N of 1 trials work because they use crossover between an active treatment and a placebo. That is, a person will start with one treatment, spend some amount of time on it, and then switch over to the other treatment. And this process repeats for however long is needed. In an RCT, many people provide only one observation, but in an N of 1 trial, one person produces many over time. They act as their own control. We just need to see the difference between the days where they take the active treatment and the days where they weren't. What's amazing about the N of 1 trial is the fact that they're considered to match the gold standard of evidence set by RCTs. RCTs allow us to make causal statements about therapies. They allow us to say a treatment causes a change to the disease. You've probably heard that correlation does not equal causation. Both the RCT and N of 1 trial allow us to say that they're equal. But there's a key difference. Unlike RCTs, N of 1 trials produce individual treatment effects, evidence that a therapy works in a single individual. Because of this, N of 1 trials are useful in the field of personalized medicine. But if they're so useful, why aren't they used more? An individualized treatment effect is extremely useful if you happen to be that one person, but not so much for everyone else. It has a generalizability problem. And since pharma companies are the ones producing new drugs, they want to make sure it works well enough for a wide enough market to be profitable. That being said, there are ways to circumvent this generalizability problem using more advanced models, but that's a topic for another video. Since we need to follow someone over time, possibly a long amount of time, N of 1 trials are best suited to chronic diseases. It's also better if the treatment works immediately. This rules out using the N of 1 trial for acute events like accidents or trauma or with slow-acting treatments. The N of 1 trial has a special place in my heart because it's actually the topic of my PhD dissertation. My hope is that they become more widely known and used. One reason I think N of 1 trials are really cool is that they shine in the arena of rare diseases, also known as orphan diseases. For people with these orphan diseases, it's unlikely that an RCT will help them directly. But think about this. N of 1 trials don't need to be held by large hospitals or pharmaceutical companies. You can start one today just by using your smartphone or even just a pen and paper. Nothing can stop you from gathering data on yourself and using an N of 1 design to figure out how to improve your life. That's the entire ethos behind communities like the quantified self. N of 1 trials can change individual lives, and that's why I like studying them. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more, consider hitting the subscribe button. If there's something you want me to cover, let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.